My dear listeners, do you need a hand to hold you out of your fears, sins and failures, or a hand so strong to sustain, maintain and protect your life, family and blessings? Then you are welcome to the Regeneration Hour Radio Broadcast with Bishop Maxwell C. Corey. You are in today for another life-transforming encounter with God by His Spirit through His Word. The Bible says He sent forth His Word, and His Word healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. As the Word of God comes your way, it is coming with power, precision, deliverance, and healing. All you have to do is to receive God's Word by faith as it speaks to you through His servants. You can now relax as I invite God's servant, Bishop Maxwell C. Corey, to preach. I bring you greetings of joy in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is another wonderful brand new day that our Father in heaven has made. And by his grace, we will also rejoice and be glad in the same. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, number 103, stanza 7, that God made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. And because Moses received the revelation of the ways of the Lord, he did not sin against God like the rest of the children of Israel. My dear listener, as you listen to this message, may the revelation of the ways of the Lord come your way, and may you receive grace to receive the same that your life might be a pleasure unto God. For the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11, that God has curated all things, and for his pleasure they are and we are curated. Amen. In this episode of the Regeneration Radio Brokers, I want to bring our way part four, with which I intend to round off the teachings of on the topic, the ironies of life, with emphasis on greatness and leprosy. Our Bible reading will be from the second book of Kings, chapter 5. We will read from verse 10 to verse 14. I read, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wrought and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Fapa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean. So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great things, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for the reading of your word. And we pray, Lord, open our eyes this moment that we may behold wondrous things out of your word. And those things which we do not know, do thou teach us. And I rebuke every satanic distraction away from my listeners and away from their environments in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Lord, speak, for we are willing to hear from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, back to the message. As I said before now, I believe God to deliver the last part of my teachings and ministrations on this topic, the ironies of life, with emphasis on greatness and leprosy. 
we reviewed the good steps that Naaman took towards his healing. These good steps included the fact that he received the message of God's healing power available for him through a humble messenger, a kidnapped Israeli girl who became a maid to his wife in his house. Number two, he was willing to go to the king of Syria to ask for his help to enable him to go to Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel, as at that time, in order to be healed. Number three, he acknowledged the fact that he was a leper because the little girl said, if Naaman will be able to go to Samaria, he will be healed of his leprosy. Naaman did not quarrel with that girl to say, why did you call me a leper? Naaman acknowledged the leprosy associated with him and was willing and to an extent humble enough to go to Israel because Naaman wasn't a lover of Israel. And as at that time, his country, Syria, had series of battles with Israel. The little girl serving the wife who delivered the message to him about the possibility of his being hit in Samaria was actually a kidnapped Israeli young girl that was living with them. My dear listener, always remember this. A sinner must acknowledge his sins before God and be humble enough to accept God's offer of salvation for that sinner to be saved. The same last week, I explained to us some wrong steps and actions of Naaman which would have stopped his healing, except that he eventually submitted to the good counsel of his servants and got healed. Some of these wrong steps included the fact that Naaman and the king of Syria sought for Naaman's healing through the wrong person, the king of Israel. Naaman also came with much money, gold, silver, expensive clothes, as if God's salvation and healing are for sale. Next, Naaman responded to Elisha's instructions with pride and anger. In anger, he walked away from Elisha's instructions, and in pride, he despised Elisha's instructions and River Jordan, the ordained place of his healing. Now get this right. When Naaman went to the house of Elisha, Elisha didn't come out to give him an honorable reception. Elisha sent a message through his servant, said, go tell Naaman to go to River Jordan and wash seven times and he will be healed. Elisha knew that Naaman was naturally and ceremonially unclean as a leper, and that what a leper needs is not false honor, but cleansing from leprosy. Leprosy is a dishonor to his victim. Therefore, every victim of leprosy should seek for solution to it instead of laboring for vain honor. Solution to leprosy in your life. Solution to sinful lifestyle associated with you is not for you to hide such a leprosy or sinful lifestyle that has kept you in bondage for years and begin to seek for honor from people as if you are a normal person. The solution is God's salvation. Sin, like leprosy, kills. Yes, it may kill slowly as leprosy does, but certainly it will kill. So 
Naaman didn't feel good that he, as the servant of the king of Syria, that came to the prophet of God, was not honored. But look at it from this angle. Naaman came as a servant of the king of Syria. Elisha the prophet spoke as a servant of God. And God is greater than the king of Syria and leprous Naaman. Some folks do not seem to recognize the honor that God has associated with his genuine servants. On that day, Naaman was so proud that he felt he has to tell Elisha what to do. Notice how many Things that Naaman said in verse 11 that he thought that Elisha should have done. Number one, he said, I thought he would surely come out to me. That is to say, Elisha should have given him an honorable reception. Number two, he thought that Elisha will stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. That is to say, he wants to give directions to Elisha the prophet on how to worship God. Number three, he thought that Elisha will strike his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Do one can abragadabra. That is to say, Naaman wanted to give directions on how to conduct church services. Whenever any spiritual leper or sinner, be it an occultist who belongs to any secret society, who is a rich man or government official, begins to think how to tell men of God the way they should preach or pray. It is a sign that such a leprous man, such a sinner, is morally mad and mentally sick and walks in foolish pride and indeed wants to die a leper and go to hell fire. But I pray today that every spiritual leper listening to this message, irrespective of your professional attainment, your wealth, your status in the society you belong to, that you humble yourself before God and ask for his mercy and salvation in your life. On that day, proud, leprous Naaman wanted God and his prophet to honor his leprosy. Naaman really felt humiliated by Elisha. His proud heart made him to reason foolishly and in pride he turned away to go back to Syria still a leper and wanted to justify his unreasonable behavior by referring to two rivers in Syria river Abana and river Fapa these two rivers are literal rivers in Damascus, in present Syria. Today, they are identified with River Barada, which flows in the center of Damascus, and River Awaj, which flows south of Damascus. Pride made Naaman to think that River Jordan has nothing good to offer him. Pride has made many people to lose their moments of miracles and salvation. In James chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says concerning God, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. On that day, Pride made Naaman desire to tell prophet Elisha how to do his work. At this point in time, let me explain this. We are not individually complete, perfect, and independent of one another in an absolute sense. 
as human beings, we may have areas where we excel individually above others, either in the area of profession or by reason of talents, skill, or environment. We also do have areas where we must submit to one another in order to prosper. It doesn't matter who you are. When once you appear in a law court, standing trial before a judge, you don't call the judge by his first name, even if the judge is younger in age to you. You must address him, my Lord. If you misbehave, the judge can make a pronouncement that will send you to the prison. It doesn't matter how great you are in life, how rich you are. If you are a student, whether it be postgraduate student or undergraduate student, your lecturer becomes your teacher and academic guide. No matter how intelligent you are, after answering questions, you submit the same to your lecturer. Your lecturer will mark it and decide the mark to award to you. It doesn't matter how great you are. If you are sick and you go to the hospital, you will have to submit to the medical doctor. The medical doctor may be a younger person to you, may not be as rich as you are. But if you want to receive good medical attention, where the need demands that you become stuck naked before the medical doctor, you will become naked before the medical doctor. The medical doctor will examine you and make appropriate prescriptions. On the other hand, the medical doctor, when he appears before the judge, he will not act as if he has come to the law court to make medical prescriptions for the judge. He will address the judge as my Lord, and we submit to the judge. No matter how worthy you are as a businessman, when your vehicle stops you on the road, you have to look for that small mechanic. It could be a roadside mechanic, and you will submit to his demands. When he says, buy this paper, do this, do the other, you will comply with it in order to have your vehicle functional again. That is the way life runs. Anybody that thinks that he or she is complete, perfectly independent of other people and has no regard for anybody is living in a fool's paradise. In the same way, God expects us to submit and humble ourselves before him. Irrespective of the political power, the financial power, or whatsoever so-called advantage that God has bestowed any man with, the day such a man thinks that he has stopped being a breath of life, the day such a person forgets that naked came he into the world and naked he will leave the world, the day the person fails to realize that whatsoever wealth he's making, whatsoever property he's buying, he is just buying them and paying for them for the remaining number of days or years he will live on planet Earth. The rest, his friends or children, even if they are foolish children, will enjoy them. So each and every one of us must learn how to submit to God with our inadequacies and sinful lifestyle for him to heal us. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. On that day, Naaman broke these laws of submission to one another and felt that he could be a good soldier and also a good prophet. No way. He failed as a prophet. Again, look at the different thoughts of his heart in verse 11. He desired honor from prophet Elisha. This is because 
he was used to honorable and hero's reception at different times. What a leper needs is not a false honorable reception, but solution to his leprosy. Hear me. You cannot dishonor God with your dirty, immoral, corrupt lifestyles, with mouth full of falsehood and deception, and you expect God to honor you as a sinner. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30b, the Bible says that thus saith the Lord, be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Romans chapter 2, verse 11 says, For there is no respect of persons with God. A sinner, whether big, rich, poor, or small, is a sinner. On that day, Naaman looked down on River Jordan, the destined place for his healing. Just as some people today look down on some men of God, on some places of worship, they will show much regard to beautiful large church buildings. Some of these beautiful large buildings that do not have the real presence of God associated with them are like River Abana and Papha of Damascus, good in appearance, but destitute of God's power and presence, and only good for carnal ceremonies, religious rituals that are not associated with the true worshippers of God. But that's exactly what some big folks in town need, where they will enter majestically, some ceremonies and rituals are carried out, and their foolish pride will be well fed. My dear listener, your salvation will not come by church ceremonies, sacrament, and religious rituals, but only through faith in Jesus Christ. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12, the apostles declared that there is no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved except through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul writing to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The moment you begin to put your eyes on big titles associated with men, on the beauty of church building, that is not bad on its own, but when it is beautiful outside, but destitute of the power of God, you have missed the road. Jesus Christ, when he was shown the beauty of the temple at Jerusalem, made a dispensational prophecy. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 2, he said, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Hear me, my dear listener. All man-made rituals and ceremonies will one day cease. Only our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ will stand on the day of judgment. As Naaman made to leave back to Syria in anger, thank God that his servants came to him and spoke reason to and into him in verse 13 of our text and asked him if Prophet Elisha had told him a difficult thing to do in order to be healed. Wouldn't he have done it? But what of now that he gave him a simple instruction, wash and be clean? This argument makes sense to Naaman. After all, geographically speaking, Naaman will still cross River Jordan on his way back to Syria. To the credit of Naaman, he accepted the counsel of his servants. But today, some of the people around our political leaders seem to be so selfish and greedy. 
Some of them find it difficult to offer really counsel that we help them and secure their tomorrow. They only want to make money for their pockets and themselves. Now, Naaman accepted the simplicity of the instruction of Elisha to him. My dear listeners, I summarize. The simplicity of the gospel should not make any man to despise it. Just receive Jesus Christ and you will receive the power to be a child of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. Next, believe on our Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. John chapter 3 verse 16. And finally, believe him with your heart, not your mouth. Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Let me pray for you quickly. Father, I pray for these ones that listen. As many as are repentant of their sins, show them mercy. Wash them with the blood of Jesus and give them the power to be your children. In Jesus' name, amen.